Hey, YouTube, what's up? Anyway, we're going to get reading. And the last part we read was about Mearsham. The Briar and the Mearsham King and Queen of Pipes. Okay. We left off at the discovery of the Briar Burl. Okay. Some years after the introduction of the Mearsham pipe, smokers began to realize that the best material for pipe bowls was wood of a very special kind, clay, porcelain, and Mearsham, despite their admirable, admirable qualities, were too fragile. Metal pipes were stu too sturdy, heated rapidly, rapidly, and were too heavy. Pipes carved from cherry and willow wood, however, met, the little, met with little success. The creation of the ideal pipe, the universal pipe, had to await until the discovery of Briar. By the way, I'm smoking my gray bow. The introduction of briarwood as pipe material was quite accidental. It was linked to the cult of hero worship which sprang up shortly after the death in 1821 of the French Emperor Napoleon Bonaparte. One of those who glorified the emperor's memory was a French pipe maker who decided to honor his hero by making a pilgrimage to the Mediterranean island of Corsica, Napoleon's birthplace. Being a passionate smoker, the pipe maker took one of his most beautiful Meerschaum pipes with him in an unlucky moment, however, he broke the bowl of his pipe and was left without means of smoking. Fortunately, in the same Corsican village, there lived a farmer known for his skill in carving. The Frenchman promptly commissioned the farmer to carve a new pipe for him out of any suitable wood. The farmer soon presented the pipe maker with an attractive pipe made of a hard, close grained, pale golden wood. The pipe had so many fine qualities that its owner brought back to France several specimens of the wood from which it was made. The burl of the tree heath, or brier, as it is called in French. Eventually, the same Briere was angelicized first into Briere, then Briere, and then later Briere. And there's all these different spellings B R U Y E R, then B R I E R, and then later B R I A R. So that's why all the different weird sounding Briers. Enthusiastic over his discovery, the pipe maker brought his briar samples to St. Claude, a small French town from those factory he usually brought his wooden pipe stems, where he usually bought his pipe stems. That was in St. Claude. This town, located in a remote valley of the Jura Mountains, had a remarkable history as the center of wood carving. The craft had been introduced to St. Claude during the Middle Ages by monks to, wa to while away the long winter months when heavy mountain snowfalls kept both people and livestock indoors at the Great Abbey, the center of the medieval sediment the monks carved rosaries, crucifixes, and ordinarily household goods out of boxwood which grew abundantly in the neighborhood. The pheasants began 
to imitate the monks and wood carving soon became the chief occupation of the inhabitants. The former monastery grew into a thriving town. Its ancient abbey church became a cathedral. The French pipe manufacturer asked the clever craftsmen of St. Claude to try their hand at a new material by carving out some pipe bowls. The artisans soon found that the briar presented some problems. The wood had to pass through a complex seasoning process before it could be fashioned into satisfactory pipes. Also, the knotted and gnarled briar burls were all different and contained many flaws. It took a good deal of experience to learn to make the proper cuts so as to carve the blocks to advantage. Despite these difficulties, the briar pipe industry developed and took hold in St. Claude, eventually dwarfing all the other carved goods manufactured in that town. A century after the discovery of the briar root, 5,000 inhabitants of St. Claude's were busy turning out some 30,000 pipes a year. Thus, the broken Mearsham pipe bowl in Corsica led to the foundation of a new thriving business. Briar pipe making spread from France to England and then to America, and the briar root quickly eclipsed all other pipe materials. Now we'll get into the uh, briar plant. The briar plant is a tough little tree which the botanists call Erica arborea, a member of the healthier family. It closely resembles a dwarf tree since it grows to no more than 15 or 20 feet high. Found chiefly on the shores of the Mediterranean basin, it develops, it, its development depends on climate and soil. Most plants flourish readily under abundant rainfall and fertile soil, but the briar mostly suitable for use in pipes is that which has to fight for its survival high in the mountains, Mediterranean, mountainous Mediterranean country. There the soil is barren and rocky, rainfall is sparse, and growing conditions are among the worst in the world. Harsh winds tear at the hardy plant. The rocky soil resists its efforts to grow, but the hardy briar drives its roots into the smallest crevices, forcing the soil or rock apart bit by bit. In fighting for the for foothold in the arid soil so that it can nourish itself and grow, the little shrub develops a tight, hard grain knob of wood just above its roots. This toughest portion of the plant, the briar burl, makes the burl plant unique in the plant kingdom, at least in so far as pipe smokers are concerned. The burl found in most fully grown briar bushes lies just below the surface of the earth, barely covered with dirt. Neither stem nor root, the burl is the meeting place of the roots, which grow downward from it and the trunk which grows upward from it. In fact, the burl serves as the briar's shield against the unfriendly environment. It forces the opening in the hard rock or soil above the roots and anchors the plants against the wind that would bend or break it. Only the burl often erroneously called the briar root is used in making briar pipes. The frail-looking briar plant hardly seems like a promising candidate for fire-resistant pipe bowls. The bush boasts little foliage, and, it, and its branches tend to cluster around the spindly trunk, seemingly for protection against the elements. But its sparse foliage and feeble branches encourage the growth of the burl just under the ground. If the climate 
were more temperate and foliage might be more beautiful, but the burls from which pipes are made would be smaller and less desirable. Until quite recently, most briarwood was obtained from the rocky deserts of Algeria. Today, however, much of the high-quality briar comes from Spain, Corsica, Sardinia, Sicily, Greece, and Asia Minor. In these regions, a mild winter or occasional showers is usually followed by a hot, dry summer. In trying to survive the period of drought, the briar develops its characteristics close, hard grain. These areas also furnish an arid, infertile soil from which the best briar burls are derived. Briar grown in more fertile soil has fewer flaws than which comes from the Rocky Mountain country. But since the hard briar is most desirable at most desirable, a flawless piece of mountain briar has a higher value than a flawless but softer briar block from the fertile valley. Good briar burls are difficult to find. The large heath shrubs take a long time to mature. The most suitable root may be 60 to 100 years old. Some of the finest briar burls ever found may have been growing for as long as 250 years. If the briar grows in remote and desolate areas, such as the rocky woodlands of Sardinia, the heavy burls must be carried by hand or by mule over rough mountain paths. Because of the dry climate, forest fires may quickly sweep over a tract of briar. The area then becomes useless for 50 years or more. Until another growth of briar has had the time to mature, moreover, sparks falling on the exposed burl may pit the wood and lay it open for destructive insect pests. If the briar continues to grow, it will close around the cavity and the flaw will not become apparent until the burl is cut. Or perhaps not even until the pipe itself receives its finishing cuts. Because of the long growth period, it is somewhat easier to seek out natural briar than to try to cultivate it. Large areas of virgin 100-year-old briar forest have been opened up in Greece in recent years in areas where the briar bushes are carefully cultivated. However, sections of the young burls may be removed every three or four years, leaving enough of the plant alive for another cutting three or four years later. The briar root made its entry into crucial moment in the history of smoking at the time the pipe faced two increasingly powerful competitors cigar and cigarette and a result of this declining in popular favor but the introduction of briarwood allowed pipe manufacturers to produce a small hard wearing pipe Handy, attractive, and relatively inexpensive. The briar pipe put the luxury of fine pipe smoking within the reach of every man's wallet, and the briar pipe has now become as popular as the clay pipe once was. That's the end of that chapter. Here's a little picture that they had on here of the briar root on the left. And... The heath tree from which the briar root is derived on the right. So, that's the end of that chapter. The next chapter is chapter 3, which is a very good one. Pipe Varieties. And that is Weber's Guide to Pipes, Pipes, and Pipe Smoking. Later, YouTube.